So then Jesus even proves more clearly that he did this miracle for the context of the gospel of Mark. He proves it in my mind beyond a shadow of a doubt because of what is recorded in verses 27 through 30. In 27 through 30, this has all happened, and then they leave, and it says, Now Jesus and his disciples went out of the towns of Caesarea Philippi, and on the road he asked his disciples, saying them, Who do men say that I am? So they answered, John the Baptist, but some say Elijah, and others one of the prophets. And he said to him, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered and said to him, you are the Christ. Then he strictly warned them that they should no, tell no one about him. Right after this miracle, Jesus comes to the disciples and he says, who do men say that I am? If this answer doesn't follow along with this miracle, I don't know whatever do, what does. They said, well, some think you're John the Baptist. Some think you're Elijah, and some think that you're one of the other prophets. You see, what they're saying in that is this, is that, is that they recognize in you that there's power in your words. They, they recognize John the Baptist, although he didn't really perform any miracles, had some of the most powerful words. He was one of the most powerful preachers ever to walk the face of the earth. There's power in your words. That They see that there's power in your actions. Elijah was one of the greatest prophets and, and miracle workers of all the Old Testament. There's power in your actions. Uh, the, the, there's truth in your words. You, you sound like a prophet. We see that there's truth. We see that there's meaning. There's power in your words and your actions and in, in your teaching. A lot of good things. The only problem was they saw him, a man like a tree walking. They didn't see Jesus for who he was yet. They thought he was someone else. They thought, surely this is John the Baptist reincarnated. This is surely Elijah. The spirit of, of Elijah has come upon this human being. You see, they saw a glimpse, but they didn't know who Jesus was. We live in a world today, friends, who in many cases have the same problem. Who is Jesus? He was a great teacher. Who was Jesus? He was a good man. Who was Jesus? He's a miracle worker. Who is Jesus? He's one of the paths to heaven. You see, they continue to see Jesus like a tree, like a man walking. They've yet to see him clearly. And so the biggest question of the day gets asked of the disciples. And friends, this morning, it's the biggest question of this day as well. Jesus says, okay, okay. That's who, that's who the world says that I am. That's who other people say that I am. And then he says this in verse 29. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Who do you say that I am? You see, friends, it doesn't really matter what the world says about Jesus. It matters about what we say about Jesus. It matters about what you. It doesn't matter to you in your life what I say about Jesus. It matters what you know about Jesus. Who do you say that he is? And Peter speaks up for the group as he normally does. He says, well, you're the Christ. You're the Messiah. You're the Son of God. In Matthew chapter 16, verses 16 and 17, this same conversation is recorded and and it matthew gives a little more detail it says simon peter answers you are the christ the son of the living god you are the christ the son of the living god and jesus answered and said to him blessed are you simon barjona for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you but my father who is in heaven flesh and blood has not revealed this to you but my father who is in heaven 
If you know Jesus, the Jesus of the Bible, as your Savior today, it's because God has revealed him to you through his spirit, through his word. Because there's no flesh and there's no blood. Listen, I could talk to you for hours and hours and hours, and I would. But I could never convince you in and of myself of who Jesus is. But the Spirit of God can. 